welcome to the metal voice. He's back. It's back. Lips from Anvil. What's going on, Lips? Not much, man. Okay. What All do you right. mean? You got like album number 20. That's what's going on, right? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, sound enthusiastic there. I've been waiting almost a year for the damn thing to come out. So <laughs> One and only going to be released June 28th on AFM Records. Also, a tour is going to be starting on July the 10th, all the way to the end of August. Of course, there's some festival dates that I saw. Uh, Lips, our guest, once again, it's always a pleasure. It's, it's great that you have this new album out. It's very exciting, and we could dive right into it. I, I think there were some pretty cool songs on this album where you're kind of touching into little areas like fight for your rights uh mm -hmm. which is a more of a a speedy song back to the old school speed of uh of of uh, uh anvil but as well as a message of you know fighting which has a double meaning there right fighting for your rights in many ways maybe you want to explain that lips well the explanation is really simple because it was inspired by the death of the president and vice president of Attic Records. Oh, okay. That's what that's what inspired me to write that. It's was cathartic to be able to be. I'm, I mean, I was young. I signed a contract that I shouldn't have signed, so it becomes my fault. So, so, but at the same time, the the idea that here I am in my late sixties and I still don't get paid for the, my first, my first three albums. Oh boy. So, you know, it's like, it's still, it's still, it's ridiculously unfair. You, you, you in today's day and age, you don't, you, there's no such thing as contracts like that. This was done in a day and age when they could get contracts for forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, so, I mean, so, so. Let me ask you this then: on that, on no, that, the, the blood will never dry. That, that, that basically is is the the foundation of the of the whole thing. Is that you sign? It's like you have signed a contract for life. That's what you did. And it's it's there wasn't really wasn't really a choice. <laughs> it's not like there was a whole bunch of labels. That were there to to sign the band. It's what what we it's what we were given, and it was the it was our opportunity, and we had to take it, but plain and simple. Yeah, and to be fair to yourselves, I mean, you know, I've got records here that Triumph are an attic. I got Lee Aaron on attic, right? They were all your stable mates at the day, and and we just had this conversation with Lee Aaron, re-recording some of her material that she can might might get her rights back because she's kind of in the same boat as Anvil is. Of course, because that's that that was the the that was the standard of which they the way that that Attic Records did their business when you when you signed a contract it was forever. Oh boy, and it's they, there's no such thing as that anymore. It's been it, it, that's been changed. They can't do that. You know, eventually, eventually, all the all your your work comes back to you. Because everything has a finite, a finite, a finite ending. Right. When you make a contract, it has to be a finite ending, and or or and with ex, with the, with the possibility of extensions. But that's the way it, it should work and should have worked, but didn't back in the, back in the early eighties like that. Can, can you get that? Can you get yeah. your? What, so what is it? The masters? Is yeah, it the masters? The same bullshit. Um, now, having said that. Uh, they try and bought themselves out. So that's a that's a completely different that's a completely different ball game. That yeah yeah cost them millions yeah yeah or whatever. I don't I don't I don't yeah. I don't know. It's unknown. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's no, business, I, yeah. I I don't know their yeah. business. I, yeah, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. no idea. I don't know whether they're still. But they were signed to a major label, through but went through Attic, and it could be that 
that maybe they were more independent th than we were. Maybe it wasn't a record deal. Maybe it was strictly licensing. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm I'm pretty sure that Triumph bought their way out of the problem because I don't think that they're tied to Unidisc like I am. <laughs> what's what's crazy is you know back in the day you you were actually encouraging people not to buy back wax, and now I'm seeing it as a re-release. You know, an album that probably didn't sell that well back in the day and that you actually hoped it didn't sell very well because you, like you said, you weren't getting anything from it. It was all B-sides and maybe some poor recorded songs on there. And, and yet they're still releasing it. So I'm, I'm not getting anything for any of the right. songs or any of the albums unless I, unless I play live and I get, I get royalties for being seen and performing it's called performing rights and that's the only place that i can make money or if it gets on the radio and you know just as well as i do <laughs> you ain't gonna be playing on the radio anytime soon right <laughs> feed your fantasy has an outside chance <laughs> but, li lips lips but i want to ask you this okay so you have the masters there's publishing you've lost everything with attic on the first three albums was that what happened yeah, it's, all, to, it's all all signed to Attic Records. Is there not like I know that there's new laws in the U.S. as after forty years of masters go back to the bands. Is that not the case in Canada? No, no. Oh boy, not not it it, it it's the laws changed after after our contract, so we don't get our stuff back ever. It's wow. signed forever. That's it. And only maybe with millions of dollars can you change the, change it. Yeah. And why is it turned to millions of dollars? Because the people who own it, it's their bread and butter. They don't want to give it up. Yeah, so if yeah. they, want it, they want millions of dollars for it. So that's why we encourage everybody to get out there and buy one and only, right? It, it, the record companies and the way that it works is nothing less than 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 loan sharking, okay? <laughs> because and I, I don't know if I've explained this or, or or enough, but if an album costs twenty dollars to buy, let's say a CD costs twenty dollars to buy, that money only a dollar. One dollar goes back to the band, but that dollar goes against their red line. Oh, so what is the red line created? How much did the re record label give to the band to record? So let's say it cost you ten thousand, ten thousand dollars to record the album. That means, Okay, they give you ten grand. The re the re record label gives you ten grand to, for the for the record. So it didn't go in my pocket. It went into the studio. Okay, so get get that. I I still have not been paid. Okay, that that, that that an important aspect. Like we're talking about when does the musician get paid or how do they get paid? Okay, so now in order to to pay off that sum of money, you have to sell. 10,000 copies, right? Because yep. that's yep. a dollar yep. from each record sale. You have to, it goes back to the record company. And that's how you pay back the 10,000 that they gave you. And until you pay that back, you get nothing. Meanwhile, they're getting the other $19. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They're in no, they're in no hurry to give you your rights back, ever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you, you uh, lowballed it at ten thousand though. You should have highballed it at a hundred thousand. Well, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying that the numbers, the numbers. Yeah. And the numbers are also tabulated by the record company, what they're going to fucking charge you with. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only that, how they're going to pay it back. 
the 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 or how you're going to pay it back at what at what rate so let's say you sell 10,000 copies this year right mm-hmm. well they say you only sold two yeah <laughs> that's right yeah yeah right so music business music business uh you know i i i'm I'm not being bitter. I'm just, I'm just, it's the reality of the, of the way that the business works. How is a record company going to make money? Yeah. They've got a lot of people to pay. There's, there's the other side of the coin too, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, what, 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 what are they, they're up against a huge amount to try to promote a, a band and that costs a bloody fortune. And a lot of times they're not getting, they're not getting good workmanship either, right? They give you know here they give the publicist of the of the company a, a band a, a, a promote this, and the guy sits around sm- drink, drinking coffee all day and doesn't doesn't bother do, waiting for calls to come in rather than making calls to make it go out. Yeah. You know, like people don't not doing their job and shit like that, man. It's like. You're talking historically, not with AFM Records. I mean, well, AFM AFM has actually been very, very diligent about about getting uh, the interviews done and 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 actually promoting. I have haven't got any any complaints, Good. but it's still the same structural structural uh, financial aspect. They give you they give you a a, 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 a royalty advance. And it's a royalty advance that paid for the recording. Well, okay. <laughs> and we're going to try to sell enough records to pay it off. To recoup that, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, will I? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's why we're here today. Well, that's why we're here. We're here for no one and only. Um, and, and, you know, like it, it's... It's a crapshoot for all of for for everyone involved, and sometimes it's, in sometimes it's an in some cases it's an understood loss. They don't care. This is not going to you know, but but when you the, when the rates are so uh, in in favor of the record company, you could see them going ah let it, let it slide because they're going to make their they're one way or another they're going to get their their ten grand back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and at, yeah. least, at the very, very, very least, they're going to get their ten grand back, right? So the, it's not really the, the investment is fuck all in comparison to what is made in the long run, especially when it's it's nineteen to to one dollar, right? Yeah, you're getting nineteen, they're getting one. You're doing a lot better. The record company's in a lot better position to 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 lose money than than you are because they're making. They're making more, so yeah, yeah. And, and you've been on the other, on the other, and then on the other side of the all that, the way the, the other half of the business is, they promote you, they get you, they get you the fame that you need to fill the to fill the clubs to 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 sell enough CDs. It's just a whole cycle. Yeah. So how do you exist without this? You can't. So it's just the, it's just the. The, the the structure of the of the the finances that could be better but you know and that's why they've got these 360 deals or whatever they're calling them where the record company goes now well now we're going to take part of your 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 merch your merchandise it's like holy shit man <laughs> is there anywhere where they, they they don't reach and grab it and you know it's just like wow well, if it makes you feel any better, and uh, you know they're suffering too, they're suffering too. You know the record buyers are not buying records, right? They're just yeah, that's the other thing. How are they going to make their money? Right. There's another how, side too. How, right? are they, how are they ever going to recoup that that ten grand if it's ten grand? You know, what I mean, yeah. imagine when imagine these records that, that you know that you know in the, in the neighborhood of fifty thousand dollars and more, and then you on top of that all the advertising that goes, holy Christ, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 tough for both sides. Very tough, very tough. You, you've lived the other side of that coin, right? Self promoting and financing it yourself, oh, and man. for years you saw how hard and difficult that was. So, uh, 
I mean, the, the album sounds great, which yeah. is something that uh, Advil struggled with in the, in the 90s because the money and the, the support wasn't there. So, Yeah, no, I, I, and things are vastly changed for, for me. I, I mean, I'm, that's, but that's, that's me. I'm just, um, I mean, obviously I'm doing a lot better today than I ever have. <laughs> that, 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 so I've got absolutely nothing to complain about. I'm just talking about what it, what's out there for, yeah. for, for newcomers and what they're going to come to realize when they get into the business. They go, holy shit, man, you got to be kidding me. No, <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> At least one thing you got out of all this is a good name, like a, a brand name, like Anvil. Like it's it's a le- it's a well, legacy, right? It's, At it's least. all it's 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 it, 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 these are the trade offs. Yeah, I got a name forever, but it cost me forever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's well said. Yeah, uh, it, it, what the hell? <laughs> you know, and 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 these were the realizations that we had before signing it. Because before signing it, you're thinking, what what's going to happen in the future? And you're thinking, what if it goes big? Then we're never, you know. Well, actually, the whole thing is, if it had gone big and recouped, you know, that would have been a completely different, a really completely different story. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. just to clarify this, Lips, your 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 metal on metal album. It's not recouped. Is that what you're saying? It's it, it hasn't been recouped to this day, which was released what forty something years ago, right? Yeah. Well, it's crazy. I'm and that, that, how is that because because of the, the the structure for for the for the actual payments? If you're paying a dollar, yeah, per f- album sale, okay, and that's what you pay, and you're paying off, you know hundreds of thousands of dollars it's a lifetime dude yeah yeah it is it is and, and you're you know you're, not only are you paying for recording costs but you're paying for their pizza parties their coffees you know uh, them taking you out to dinner right where you think they're taking you out but they're actually charging you no, that's, yeah that's right exactly yeah. and hey, we, got, we got you a new car lips we got you a new car and they're writing the bill yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bill. you know what i mean whether you whether you ate the steak or not, and you know what I mean, you had steak tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The good news is, at least you got a great song with "Fight for Your Rights." It's a great, you know, very you know, speed metal, old school anthrax, thrax, uh, anthrax, anvil, anvil. sounding, sounding anvil sounding song. So, so let's, let's go. <laughs> Let's talk about a one and only, you know, like you say in the, the lyrics, originality is the key to success. And I think Advil's proven that. But redundant copies receive no praise. What do you think about these bands that are out there? I won't name them, but they're like the third and fourth generation Sabbath or Zeppelin. And they seem to be quite popular these days. Well, they're they're popular for one album. Could very well be, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's just the way it is. Anything that, hey, listen to this. Now you're listening to it, and then there's nothing more to listen to. Yeah. Okay. It's one way, yeah. Because Jimmy and I have this debate. Does it sound like you're listening to see if it sounds the same, and then you listen to it, and you go, okay, I listen to it. Done. Yeah. So what are they going to do? Another album like that? They've already gotten the excitement, and everyone goes, ah, eh, it's, eh, it's a copy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have this debate all the time. <laughs> you know what? Like, like when, uh, I mean, you, you, you Look at history. History speaks for itself. I mean, you don't even don't don't even don't even talk to me about it. Just talk about the bands that that have done that. Okay, one of the prime example, fucking biggest example. Back in the seventies, there was a band called Clatu. You know what yeah, I'm? I've heard of them. Yeah, never heard of them. Everybody said it was the Beatles, and everybody bought that fucking record. And, that was ne- and now I've never heard of them, right? <laughs> never, never heard from or seen again. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's just one. That's just one example, and that wasn't. And and that was just because they remotely sounded like the Beatles. And that, of course, I'm. Who wasn't trying to? You know what right, I mean? Right. 
anyway, but that's, that, that's a whole that's a whole other issue. But um, but only the bands that had a unique sound in trying to copy the Beatles got anywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Certainly, the Animals sounded a lot different from the Beatles, yes. right? And certainly, the Hermits Hermits sounded different from, from both those two bands. But each one of these bands had a specific sound that they're unique. Nothing they, nothing compares. They sound like themselves. The Who, the Doors, you can name them, go on and on. And, and it just keeps going on. And every band, no matter who the fuck it is, okay? And here's the conundrum, the, really, the part that's so fucking confusing, man. And you're just going, what? Every band strives to find their identity. And initially, you don't know what that identity is until you've began to create a number of albums, not just songs, but albums. Mm -hmm. Then when you get a hindsight and you listen to it, you all of a sudden recognize who you are and what you are. Okay? Because initially, it's as... You're only going to hear what your influences are because that's all you can relate it to. Right, right. Okay, so is you know, oh, that song is like what the, my idea of what that song was, and my, that song is what this was, and and you can hear where all the influences are because you did it, but you can't hear the uniqueness in it yet. That's right. Because yeah. you, haven't, you haven't got a history. You need a history to find it. Okay. But you find it in two or three albums, and then you're there, right? But yeah. but once you're there, and then and that's what you're really striving for is so that it has your stamp, your 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 logo. Not only is the logo the same on every record, but it's the same, basically the same product with new new additions to the to the family yeah. it's like it's like a, a car company and you're putting out different models of cars they're still all fords mm -hmm. and they still all drive like fords but they're all fords but they all slightly look different generally that's what what happens but you 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 got to get your you got to get what you're using for an engine and you got to get what you're using for suspension and you've got to get the basic fundamentals, the, the style, the, the, the uniqueness that makes yep. that brand, that brand. So you do that. And then this is where the, the this is where the, where someone throws a, a, a wrench in the monkey works, a monkey wrench into the works is they, they, then everyone goes, how come all your stuff? All, it sounds like you've been doing all the same album for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Why don't you? Why don't you change? Yeah, and then you lose your fan base the moment you change. So, oh, okay, I'll change. <laughs> and you change, and now you, bingo, no record deal, no. <laughs> nothing. Hey, but saying that lips. You know, this is a groove-heavy album. I, I just love the groove, like, you know, Feed Your Fantasy. and It's got that groove. How has your approach differed now to writing music that it did maybe earlier in your career? I know what the difference is, is I know specifically what I'm doing. Okay. You know, that when, when, when you're young, when you're young, you're still experimenting. You're still learning. It's a different, it's a completely different from a completely different angle. So you happen upon things rather than I'm going to guide it. Right. You, you know, like I'm at, I'm at the point where I'm specifically looking for something. I'm specifically looking for something. And I'm, I'm looking for, you know, if it's, it's if it's a specific feel, I need the, a feel, this feel. Okay, so I'm already in my mind. I'm hearing what that is, and now I begin to find riffs in that field. So I'm actually able to guide, yeah. guide my instead of it just happened. 
I'm actually able to guide it. And then once I've I've done that, um, it's usually comes in 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 one one jump. Um, wow. and I explain it. I'm looking for a specific feel. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I start. I hit record here on my my computer, and I make it up as I go. I make it up as I go. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. That you go what? I go. <laughs> You're jamming, but there's with me myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. And I'm imagining how how the song as I'm going. What do I need? Okay, I'm singing here. Okay, this is the verse, and I'm playing. I'm going. Okay, I need a change up. I just start playing a change up. I don't. I don't care what it is. Make a change up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It'll. It'll fall into place, and it does. And I could record. I record that, and in fucking five minutes, I've got a bed track. Wow! Yeah, that's cool. From top to bottom. Okay, there's the verses. There's the subcourse. There's the chorus. There's the guitar break. <laughs> There, there, there's there's the, the the last verses there's the there's the out part all done and it's that simple it doesn't have to be three guys in the room arguing about the entry into the song okay yeah, 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 yeah. you're standing for how long it takes to to for how long it takes to actually argue through musical stuff with you, the accompaniment to what I'm doing is ridiculous. So the song I found a shortcut. Yeah. Do that for myself, bring it in, done, and then you can discuss the small things that might change. Yeah. That's way easier. Yeah, you're tweaking. You're just tweaking. I'm not getting somebody, hurry up, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lips, dead man shoes. I mean, this sounds like uh, you're a tribute to Motorhead in some ways. Especially vocally. It's a tribute to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Well, maybe with a Motorhead twist, but. Uh, uh, maybe musically, but. Musically, yeah. Dead Man's Shoes was an episode on the Twilight Zone. Rod <laughs> Surly. Twilight Zones, but um, that, that's certainly where the title came from. Um, okay. not even really the lyrics it sort of is it's just uh, the lyrics are really about uh, being superstitious or stupid stitious I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah it's motor head esque writing yes yeah 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 it, which it's reminds me anvil, it, it's still anvil oh yeah up. definitely it's got a little yeah, twist yeah, yeah. we'll call it a little little motorhead twist um, yeah, of course and there are flavors there are flavors uh, that you can hear that, and, and that's it. Should be slightly transparent because people like to to feel that uh, that they're kind of hearing an interpretation of a peer to Motorhead. You know, it's not just it's not just saying I like Motorhead. It's like yes. I love Motorhead to the point that it's part of my vocabulary. It's part of part of what makes me me. They're part of it, you know. Just like Black Sabbath is, just like Deep Purple is, just like you know all the you know, Rye Heap. You know what I mean? I, there's little bits and pieces of all different kinds of things in, in Anvil music, but it's still under the same umbrella. It's still Anvil. And we're still getting, and we're still getting chopped for it all sounding the same. But meanwhile, we're talking about <laughs> something sounds like Motorhead. Okay, well, yeah. let's talk about Heartbroken. Heartbroken does not sound like Motorhead. No, 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 no. no, no. But, 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 but it just, I was conjuring these memories of when you were telling us a story about how Lemmy was mad at you because you wouldn't join the band. And I just, I you know, love that story. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, like Heartbroken is, a cross between 21st century schizoid man and and into the fire by deep purple but yeah, they're, okay, they're yeah. but that's what that's 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 where you hear those origins from where did where does where do those those 
those kind of riffs come from or where did, have I heard those kind of riffs? That's where you've heard them. So, yeah, you can you could dissect any record. Right. And you can say that about any artist because everything comes from something else anyway, because that's what, you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been listening to your guitar playing since the 80s, and I've always been a huge fan of your solos and guitar playing. Robbo, one of my favorite drummers of all time, one of the best drummers of all time as far as I'm concerned. Chris, his bass playing adds a whole new dimension, I think, to Anvil. But nobody ever talks about your lyrics. And on this album, more, maybe more than some of the others, but they're all albums are great. Your lyrics are really interesting. They're always telling a story. And I particularly like this album and the lyrics on this album. Uh, hats off to, to your songwriting. And I think you should be mentioned as, as, you know, some of the greatest lyrics, you know, songwriter ever is your lyrics in Anvil. You know why I find that really interesting? Because the opposite is out there big time. They're not listening as far as I'm concerned. No, I don't know what I don't. I, 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 There's a lot of thought into your lyrics. It has nothing to do with ego or nothing, man. I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. How do you find that stupid? Like, how do you call that grade five? Like, or, you know kindergarten lyrics like how do you, you know i see that written like for the song legal at last okay a couple albums ago yeah yeah but the lyrics for that when i look at back at it, it it's brilliant <laughs> sorry i, I even <laughs> though my song if even if it was somebody else's song i'd say that that was and that more so in that way because i'm talking about it as if it was somebody else's song it couldn't have been more eloquently put out about marijuana than in that song like it's just so yeah. so well said and so such in 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 so, just small three verses there's so much being said that is so fucking true, right? I mean, you, you, you see, but you see, you nailed it. You nailed it because rock, but, but nailed lips. I just want to tell you this, like rock and roll was supposed to be dangerous and you're supposed to point out things in society that you, you might see wrong, right? It was supposed to be about rebellion and, and calling things out and you call things out and you call things out all the time. It is for me. That still very without any question, it's still world of fools. How much? How fucking stupid is this fucking world? <laughs> you, 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 you feed them bullshit, and it becomes the truth, and that's yeah. it. And there's no way to reverse it. Once they once the, the population learns this shit, they know I'm learning it, even if it's complete crap. And I've just been watching it going on, and it's just like, oh. wow. It's just more than wow. It's fucking scary, man. Yeah, and the, the lyrics are great on that song. What I mean, you, you nailed it. You know, or or truth is dying. That's another one, great example too. That's another yeah. song. That's it's it's. It, it, How do you th like? I I don't like. I don't know, man. I I'm I'm probably the worst critic in the world when it comes to lyrics. I, I, like I I I I hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing. That's a good. I find virtually very little good about much. <laughs> But you know, if, if you... it's, it's interesting because you know the, the way that the world looks at stuff and what they th they find profound is profound. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go, why is this popular? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> but you know, if you look at the history, twenty albums in, you look at the history of Anvil. Maybe some people don't appreciate. For every uh, Forged in Fire, Winged Assassins, uh, Madra, we had. Toe jam and butter bus jerky. So there was a sense of humor there, you know, and maybe they're focusing on the songs that have the story. Yeah, we've been, Rob and I were actually just talking about this just before this. Um, there's attached, attached to the Anvil brand is our 
early sense of humor and there's nothing you can do to change it. It's, I mean, it's been I don't know, almost 30 years <laughs> since I wrote one of those kind of songs, but. And you didn't even write the lyrics to Butterbush Jerky. Yeah, and you know, people get, get the idea that that's really lowbrow. Try it. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> Try it. Let's see you do it. Let's see somebody else create that and and do it in such a way that the way that I did the, those things. That's not easy to do. Okay, read Toe Jam. We're going to laugh about it. Read it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's clever, clever double meaning comedy, man. Sorry. Bon, Sc bon Scott made a living, right? Uh, I, I, sorry, I, I, I don't see it as being stupid, okay? Um, there are songs that are, are little, I mean, it's actually quite interesting. Even, even a little later on, which is probably one of the last ones, was Mattress Mambo. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing. It's it. It is funny. It's meant to be funny. Hello. Yes. But having having said that, I didn't just go in and 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 make a bunch of foolish statements. I used all kinds of terms to do with dancing. And even before writing the song, I I I sat down with my wife, who has her degree in dancing from university and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and I got all the all the jargon, all the all the kind of words that I needed, um, you know, the, the technical terms for different moves on the on, on a uh, for ballerina for ballerinas, for for jazz dancing, for all kinds. And there are specific moves. And I used those things as rhyming as some things in a rhyme to make the song about mattress mambo right but it's 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 being clever using dance steps and stuff like that as as the the double meaning the other song that was 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 really interesting was what was toe jam because i wrote it uh, like uh square dancing like yeah. is it was, oh down yeah the square dancing that's precisely what it it it, it was written uh, written by but in a sexual way with all double meanings yep. that's, it's it's easy to say all this but when you sit down and put it to put the pen to paper you're sitting there for hours okay it's not doesn't come a lot of fun. No, it shows there's a lot of thought behind your lyrics. And, and uh, again, you know, Bon Scott made a career out of double entendres. And, uh, and, yeah, but and, and at, the same, at the same time, you know, but, but, but having said all this, people think it's no mind shit. And I still, and, and that, that precedes us now. Oh, those oh. are the guys that wrote, that wrote fucking Toe Jam. Forget it, man. They're, they're a joke, right? You didn't get the joke. You didn't get the joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's that's okay right. because the the real fans will always understand where you're coming from. To me, condemned liberty. That that song is you just sticking it. You just saying it like it is, right? That's the world we're creating. That's yeah. the world we're fucking living in, man. We're condemning our liberty by abusing our rights. Our freedoms, that's what the fucking truth is. You abuse your freedom, and then they put a fucking door on it. And now you lost your rights. And it keeps going that way. And slowly but surely, we're going to be living in a dictatorship. Because that's what we are voting for. That's what we are putting into place by breaking our, our own, our own uh, laws. And, and morals, wrecking our, but by destroying our freedoms, just just by abusing them, you know, you got the right to say anything you want. Well, people are getting up and being Nazis. It's not right to be able to say everything you want. So okay, it's not right now. Now you got a law, and you're yeah, not. Now we got a law. You're not allowed to say that. There goes your freedom of speech. Okay. Yeah. So, it's. 
from the, the initial abuse. It's from people taking that that and using it in a wrong way. And that's what I'm saying. Freedom abuse. It, it's it's like the asshole who went on to the uh, got onto the airplane with a shoe bomb made it so we all have to take our shoes off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, hats very off to you. Yeah, very. Hats off for you to calling very... stuff out. Yeah, we're all thinking it. You're just putting down in words. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that you know, so where where do the lyrics come from? That's where they come from. You, you, you know, when I when I begin to talk about it, of course, it's going to bubble to the top immediately. I've, I've got lots to say about that shit. <laughs> well, I think that's why everybody always you know, enjoys your lyrics, at least the hardcore Anvil fans do, because you're not scared to say what it is. You, you know, you're not scared to call it out, right? And and that's, that's you know, that's the whole lure of Anvil, right? You've always been very outspoken, right? Wow. But 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 to a certain degree, right? But I'm not, I'm not saying completely outspoken, but you're not scared to, yeah, to call there, things I, out. I, 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 I will not and do not voice my opinion on actual politics i'm not going to do that no no i got nothing i will say will be mean a fucking thing anyway so why bother why isolate my why isolate myself or 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 be detrimental to myself and say something that would insult people that are my fans yeah i'm not going to do it yeah, 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 not over something that that I really, honestly, don't even care about. Yeah, and then I know that I have no no jurisdiction or or power over or it's pointless. There's no upside. No upside. And there's no upside. There isn't. You know, I I don't I don't I just don't get it. You know, I and and I I would even have this discussion with Ted Nugent. The same thing. I'd say, <laughs> Ted, what are you doing, man? You're you're making people hate you as much as you're making people love you. You're making people hate you. Why even bother? If you didn't talk about it, you'd only have people that love you. Why, why are you bothering? Uh, well, what you're trying to say is you're not going into specifics, but you'll you'll like condemn liberty or truth is dying as a general sort of concept. Yeah, but it, you know, who's side of, who's whose row am I sitting in? It's not North. That's not conservative, and it's not liberal. Liberal, okay. So, yeah. and I'm not going. And, and I'm not going to say I'm democratic or fucking or Republican. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to do it. And I don't think. I don't think by saying that we, that our liberty is condemned is being Republican or Democratic. It's being no. observant. Yes. Period. That's what. That's the word I would use exactly. And that's the right word to use. You know, you know, America, America is so worried about about communism coming, but yet you keep you keep going down this this road where you're, you know, abolishing this, abolishing that, m making this band that band. Before you know it, you are a communist. So mm -hmm. you got to watch how far you go, man. We got to start really being more diligent in watching where we're going with our freedom and what we're letting slip through our fingers. That's how I feel. But I, like I said, I'm just one, one voice in the, in, in, in billions. It's yeah. a little or no difference. So I'm, I'm just observing and it's sometimes it's pretty upsetting <laughs> and it's cathartic writing about it. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I get to, I get to expel the expel the demons. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, I, great job. I mean, they're very uh, current topics, and uh, we'll be looking back on this and saying, "What a crazy time we lived through in the in the in the twenty twenty So, uh, uh, I think the, uh, again, I'm a huge fan of your lyrics. So I'm only speaking for myself, and uh, I've been a fan for for decades now. So I, I think you've always done a great job. In well, you keep singing that. Yeah, maybe enough people will listen. Maybe enough people will listen. So, well, hopefully, you're not singing to the choir. <laughs> hey, so let, you know what about Robbo's drumming? Have you heard any nuances? Anything change over the years or on the new albums? I mean, I think I think that that the songs are more uh, have become extraordinarily cohesive. Yeah, 
which is a a great a great great improvement they're far more cohesive and pure they're not wandering off into weird weird time signatures making it hard to follow um the songs are very catchy and i think the the consistency in the drumming that the feel of the songs don't get broken yeah these 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 things have vastly improved in 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 the in 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 the present more so than from the past we're much much more uh, keep it keep it in the pocket and yeah. follow, it, follow it through from top to bottom it's it's just been um a, 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 a great a great improvement in the in that in that aspect and i think that i think that 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 the combination the combination of musicians that we have today and what we're actually doing is has been the best we've ever been to be really honest with you uh my confidence in what we're doing now is a lot higher than it's ever been than in all my in my entire career in the, and i think part of that is knowing is being able to understand okay i'm going to aim this song i'm looking specifically for this now i'm looking for a lyric that specifically says this and it's going to say that and to to actually be able to guide your writing and not just happenstance yeah once i got into that once now that i'm in that world i feel way more confident just way more confident i felt well now i know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah yeah you're controlling the process it's not, it's not like i'm still experimenting i know what i'm doing okay i know exactly <laughs> what i'm looking for you know and then rob will sometimes come to me hey man you should do this and do that do, 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 do. you know it's like whatever dude <laughs> <laughs> don't, well, don't even start don't even start <laughs> lips a lot of variety on this album you know there's a lot of melody and and that's not a bad thing at all right uh, and and i did enjoy it. it it's 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 got some it's just a little bit of everything for everyone yeah and it, it's the it's the it's the, uh, the probably the most we've been like the old anvil than we've ever been if you stop and think about the metal on metal and forge and fire album, this is probably the closest we've ever come to it. <laughs> yeah, so I could see that. I, I could, could see that. that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that have already said that, and, yeah, and yeah. including including Dave Allison. <laughs> oh wow! There you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> On that note, Lips, thank you so much for your time. Hey, it's yeah. always a pleasure. Can't wait to see you guys live again. Uh, again, the album's coming out June 28th on AFM Records. The the U.S. tour starts July the 10th and then it, to the end of August. And also there's some, I believe you're playing France, uh, Hellfest, correct? And yep. you're playing you're playing some uh, uh, festivals. In there's the a couple of festivals in our European tour. The European tour will be probably starting... Uh, October and going till December. All right. Oh wow. Okay. We've got a, a ton to do. Uh, and in September we're doing. Oh, well, we might even be to Montreal. Who knows? Oh, I hope so. Go. Yes. It's, better, yeah, right, it's a must. It's a must. <laughs> oh, it's just that we're gonna we're gonna be due because we haven't. It's going to be really the only open window that we have before we split for Europe. And once we split for Europe. We're gone for two and a half months. Wow. And when we come back, it's winter time. We don't tour in the winter. So that's, we're writing the new album then. Cause we got to get right. a new album ready for August of the, for the following August. So yeah, that, that's what's going on, man. <laughs> man, you're on fire, man. Who would have thought so many years later, you're doing better than you ever have been. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, 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 no question. And here we are. 15 years after the movie right right that, that that that's more than a that's more than a super boost that's fucking i i was given a a, a whole career that i never had 
You were 50. You were 50. <laughs> you're, you're turning 50 when they started that movie, right? You had a birthday party right at the beginning. Right. And, and by then, it's like it's no measure of failure to call a, a band a failure when they've put out 12 albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Exactly. The whole concept of that is like that, that people get that want to say that. You shouldn't be saying that. A failure, you put out one album and you never record again. This is a band that put out 12 albums and then made a movie on their 13th. Yeah, yeah. this is 13. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? People only wish to have a career as long and as fruitful as you have. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Well, it's, it's, it's how much we care. Yeah, that and comes through. And it's, if it's anything, it's proof that luck has so much more to do with everything than people give give it credit for. And so is bad luck. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. if you have bad luck at, at, at a specific time, you're you're cooked. And no matter what the fuck you do. Like I, I can't, but having said that, the 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 failure, the failure in which uh, forged in fire was looked at in 1983, which cost us a record deal and everything that was going on at the time, right? Yeah. It caused it to go into a spiral down four years lost during the, the most important period of time yeah. in metal. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. That's bad luck, man. <laughs> But the yin and yang, you know, then the movie comes along, right? And it, 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 <laughs> without without that, without that spiral down and everything that happened, there's no story. There's nothing to overcome. There's no there's no bollocks, as they would yeah. say. <laughs> you know I mean, you, you got there's some real real foundational meat and potatoes to the a documentary that's going to come later. You need you need the information. You need that shit. You need the history. Then it's worthy. Tragedy and triumph, right? You know, so when Sasha said, I'm going to make a fucking movie, no wonder I start crying. I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, man. All that shit for the, all that shit for this moment. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, you know, you know, I remember Alan saying, Jimmy, Anvil's got a documentary out at the theater. Let's go see it. That That's what I remember back in the day when the, the movie was like, oh, they do? What? What's going on? It was just like kind of like this second guessing. What's going on here? They're back. You know what I mean? They're, they're back. And uh, I love the success for the movie. But we've talked about that so many yeah. times. Yeah. No. 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 But it's 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 just it's just interesting. But that but that you know people talk about our first round our first round saying that's when we were big. And it's like <laughs> you guys the, the, no conception of what the fuck. <laughs> what the fuck really happened? Are you? <laughs> yeah, it was a, in in a certain sense, it was it was a flash in the pan, and p all people remember is the flash. They don't remember what it tastes like, what it's about. It, it it happened so fast that it never had a chance to become big. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. never had the chance to come big. It never never got never got our 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 chance in the states. We in fact. We still, to this fucking day, have not gotten the opportunity in a in a tour in a tour sense to be in a, in in a position where it's going to make a difference. Yeah. And how do you make a difference? You've got to get on a major tour, and if you don't, you stay independent, like Anvil's been for forty years. That's what that does. And until you get that 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 position, and now it's like com almost completely out of reach. How do you get that? Right. There, there's yeah. no infrastructure to get you there. They haven't got the record companies to dump the the hundreds of thousands of dollars in promotion and buy you onto that tour. Buy there. you on. That's the key. Right. Because yeah. that's the only way you're going to get it in, in today's world. So, you know, it's 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 uh, when those opportunities were there, they were there, and when they went away, they they're never coming back. They come back. Yeah. But having said that, what has come back? for me in a, in a huge way is I'm in demand worldwide. Incredible. Incredible.
that movie has been was seen everywhere and everywhere wants to see the band yeah because you know what i have i wasn't seen i haven't been seen for the most part i have not been seen how many times have i played in china once <laughs> right so there are places I still haven't been to and places I have been to still not everybody has seen, has seen me. Right. It, it's just, right. it's actually remarkable. You know, I can, I, this can go on forever. Lips. It's, it's always been a pleasure. You picked up on the, on the album that you you're into it. And certainly the talk about the lyrics was everywhere. I really would have wanted to go. I got to tell you that. Because it, it's a it's a bewilderment to me that you that a person like you is, and I don't mean this in any detrimental way at all. A person like you can uh, reads it and sees it, and I reach you. That's good. Yeah, there's lots of fucking dummies out there that are w willing to call me a a a, a, a no mind, and and. Of, uh, uh, the abilities of a five-year-old with my lyrics and I'm going how the fuck did you come to that conclusion yeah exactly like I I, I don't get it I don't, this is I, what I, keeps you creating music my friend this is what keeps you going yeah I'll prove you wrong <laughs> there you go I've been proving people wrong my whole life <laughs> there you go the one and only Lips. Anvil Congratulations. Say hi to Rob. Say hi to Chris. And say hi to Jane, too. She's a lovely lady. We had a good time. Okay, with I will. She, she, uh, yeah, she was. Uh, she knows that I'm talking to you guys today. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. All, right, all the best. Congrats on the album. It's a great album. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, we'll man. Speak to you real soon. Yeah.